You know, when I was a boy, I was much like you. I got into all sorts of trouble. And one day fortune smiled on me and I met up with my namesake. And here lies the beginning of the legend of Johnny Lingo. Back to the, you know what I mean? I don't know how to do it, bro. So just what, the, the opening? Yeah, I don't ever have a good opening. I don't oh, know. I just time it on when you say, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the yeah, Fox Nickel <laughs> Movie Starter Kit. I, <laughs> I'm just like, bro, welcome to the Starter Kit, bro. What, 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 you know what movie we're going to talk about today? Huh? We're talking about uh, The Legend of Johnny Lingo. Now, um... I heard about this movie a little bit growing up, you know what I'm saying? Like my cousins would talk about it at church or stuff, and I, I never got to watch it. And now that I did, I'm glad I did because this shit is fucking hilarious, bro. <laughs> this shit is this movie is hilarious, but also fucking stupid. <laughs> this stupid. movie is so stupid, bro. But it is great. It's it's stupid in the best way possible. I don't in know the, how much in the two the early two thousands kind of way. Come on, bro. <laughs> This movie is hella early 2000s, bro. Yeah. This shit is hilarious, man. But you was telling me that this shit is based on a short story, right? Yeah. Based on a short story that came out in 1960. Is there like a, there's a video? Is there? A so this is a, so the short story was printed uh, in like an Australian magazine yeah. about uh, this uh, traveler that went to the South Pacific in Polynesia yeah. um, and then met this crazy dude named Johnny Lingo, who was pretty badass. Um, and then in 1969, there was a short story movie made up uh, about it called- Is that on YouTube? Yeah, called Johnny Lingo. Okay. And then The Legend of Johnny Lingo is a 2003 movie, mm. like produced by MGM, directed by Steven Ramirez, uh, that's like a full length extension of that uh, short film. Nice. So, yeah, that's what we're talking about tonight. Yeah, well, today. Uh, did you uh, listen to this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, when growing up, like how, like how often did people talk about this movie? Because I remember my cousins really like talking about, it, like, dude, dude, have you ever seen the Legend of Johnny Lingo, dude? What, what did they have to say about it? That's all. Really, all they said was that it, it was funny. Have you seen you it? Watch it. Yeah. Have you seen it? It was yeah, funny. Nothing. It was funny. Yeah, that's what they said. God, this movie's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Look. <laughs> We can find levity and sadness. I'm just saying, like, yeah, it's pretty sad. There's some sad ass shit going on here, but we got to get into that, bro. Nice. We're, we're, we're going to talk about it for sure, man. Yeah, this uh, this was uh, written by Rawira Brown. Or she was part of the team. Um, and they were also on Once Were Warriors, the screenplay for Once Were Warriors. Mm -hmm. um, and then it also is starring uh, Rawiri Partene. Uh, from Whale Rider, Koro. Yeah, freaking Koro, bro. Uh, <laughs> He's a dickhead. He's a dickhead in this movie too. Yo, for He's real. He's a straight dickhead in this movie too, bro. <laughs> Like how could they keep uh how could that's they keep his, giving raw weedies? Yeah, that's just he's getting typecast. He's been typecast as the dickhead now, bro. He'd be the old mean chiefly guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but where uh is there anybody else that stood out? Johnny Lingo is uh George Hanare, which was uh Mr. Mr. Bennett. Bennett. In Once Once for Warriors. Warriors, yeah, bro, I'm I'm sensing a theme here with all the New Zealand movies we've been watching. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, let's hopefully we can add more actors to that. You know what I mean? Because there seems to be like a core group of actors that are being like uh, picked up for roles. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, uh, girl from um, Next Goal wins. Freaking Rachel, Rachel House. Rachel House. Yeah, Rachel House. You know, yeah. um, obviously the naked Samoans, you know, so definitely a theme here, bro. We're going to see a lot of people that yeah. we've seen before. You know? Yo, yeah, David Fonda, Tawila Blakely from Siona's Wedding is Come one of the on. extras in here. You know? Uh, yeah, and this was in 2000, yeah, 2003. But, uh, yeah, it looks like it, bro. It looks like it came out in 2003 <laughs> for sure. I think it was just in the, in the American Samoa again. Mm. Uh, but I don't remember watching this then. I do remember like the Mahana scenes, and I think that's mostly uh, what anybody like referenced to right. uh, this movie. Yeah, I remember seeing pictures of Tama and Mahana um, like on Facebook and stuff. Facebook and MySpace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I but I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it back then. Yeah, so. not me neither. 
Oh, nice. First time. Yeah, first time watches. First time watches. Um, so how do you want to you want to get into the into the oh. scenes? Oh no. yeah, we're just gonna dive in, bro. Come on, man. Like, so you you was watching the short film. In the short film, did they have that friggin' narrator that they got in the beginning of this movie? Because you know, I'm not that big a fan of like narrating. Right. There's a lot of narration. Yeah. There's a lot of exposition. It's like, man, and, don't just don't just talk to me, man. And I don't want to hear words from this old white fool interviewing wanna, Johnny Lingo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you, you want to see. Yeah, well, that's like a movie or like a, just a storytelling kind device. of uh, note device. Yes. Right. Yeah. But also, like, if you're using narration, then your story isn't uh, going well. Probably weak. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a uh, yeah, there's a young man uh, talking about this legendary Johnny Lingo character to yeah. this uh, explorer uh, who is uh, like the white, author? yeah, uh, the white, the white man, the white man in the uh, very cool Polynesian South Pacific, yeah. uh, is talking to this guy, he's telling the story Johnny Lingo, uh, and it starts with uh, this great storm mm-hmm. on this island. It's an unnamed island. Uh, but I always think it's a Samoan island, whatever yeah. it's, it's, it's. Yeah, it's Samoan by default. I don't care what it is. I don't care sure. if they give it a name in the movie either. <laughs> That's I, a, I was like, they might be wearing like what looks like a different island's cultural apparel, but I'm like, yeah. they're still Samoan. It's Samoa. This Samoa. Uh, but it's a huge hurricane yeah uh, and everybody in the village is scared and with their chief and praying to the gods for safety uh the next day they find a baby washed up in a shipwrecked canoe uh like imagine that bro like just imagine you're back in american sawwall but back then all right and a baby washes ashore of course you're gonna be like dude this is a gift (laughs) <laughs> the Lord. you know what i'm saying who whose baby is this just washed up on shore you know what i'm saying yeah well i mean i would have been like oh his parents are dead <laughs> like in the shipwreck that obviously happened yeah. but they grab the baby out and they take him to the chief and they're like all right this baby is from the gods we just <laughs> gotta figure out which ones yeah i think it's from the gods of prosperity. And everyone's <laughs> like, oh, this guy's not knowing. Yeah. But uh, we don't yeah. believe you, Koro. You're full of shit, just like in the <laughs> other movie. You know, and he's, uh, yo, immediately gives him, uh, like, the, his chiefdom, like, the heir to his chief title. Yeah, bro. Yeah, uh, hella did, and he already he was already married with a son, so he just gave his son's birth right away, and yeah. he was just like, "Yo, I'm gonna give it to this baby I found in a boat." Ooh, yo, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I How was up thrown by that. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Why would you do that?" And he was like, "I'm yo. so sure that this is from a." like the god's gift and he's here to become the next chief so he literally takes the like necklace of birthright off of his son (laughs) and puts it on a little baby uh to which his wife uh verbally opposes like she is chirping she's talking about yeah you already have have a son son. hold on you have a son You know, this is like in front of the whole village and oh, yeah. yeah. Uh but he's like, It's okay. This is a godly gift and he will be our chief and he raises him Rafiki and Simba style. Yeah. Um uh, and the baby starts peeing down mm-hmm. uh right as he says that and proclaims him in front of the whole village. So the village is now laughing at this chief. Yeah, a sign of uh, things to come. This fool Tama is trouble. Bro. He's just pissing on everybody's head. <laughs> He's been doing that since birth. <laughs> <laughs> since he got here. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is, uh, yeah, that's uh, the the opening of the movie. That's this the intro to discovered. the movie. Yeah. yeah, and it's played for laughs, but you said, like, there are moments of sadness in this. And, like, yeah, when I seen the boat, like, at first I was like, okay, yeah, that is maybe a gift from the gods. But, I mean, it was an obvious shipwreck, and that baby just lost both of his parents. <laughs> And now he's got the keys to a whole kingdom. Yeah. He's got the keys to a whole island for for a, a great tragedy. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> this movie is crazy. That's why I'm like, yo, this movie is hilarious. There was it's really jumps. dumb. And I yeah. was like, oh, uh, yeah. it makes sense why people are mad at this kid. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? These people are wilding, and the yeah. mom is not happy. She's outside immediately, week one. Oh, yeah. Talking Gossiping, down. Talking shit. Rumors. Oh, yeah. Like, this baby, there's no way it can be from, you know, the good gods. Yeah. Uh, it's probably it's from the be. trickster god. Yeah. The trickster god. And only the trickster god would put a red birthmark on the baby's leg. Yeah. And that signifies that he's straight from the depths of hell. Yeah. <laughs> from hell. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Bro. The, like, the ladies sitting around the fire don't even want to touch the kid anymore. They're like, whoa, this yeah. is so weird. Uh, narration. If the chief's wife is saying that about this kid. Why the fuck would I want anything to do with this yeah. kid? You know what I, mean? I mean, she's trying to restore her son's birthright. Exactly. Right? And she's right. like, I gotta get this uh, this God's gift out of here. Well, um, But yeah, it, it, we get an age jump to three mm-hmm. and a disownment from the chief. Yeah. Koro is uh, in there and he's like, yo, uh, taking away his crown and smashing it under his foot. Yeah, Tama has just been too much trouble for the first three years yeah. of his life. Too much, I guess, for the chief to handle. What busters? Yeah, fucking. As a kid, wussies. yeah, he's a kid. It was you just the shit like, talking from your wife. You know what I mean? Like, of course, she just has to ruin his reputation, right? Yeah. So now he's um. Uh, I-, I wish they showed how much trouble he was getting into as a as a kid. Like that made them yeah. be like, you know what? I gotta give this. I gotta give him up. <laughs> Straight I, gave up on Tom, bro. I feel like it was Three just years. rumors. Like he wasn't even doing anything. But you could spit. Like I mean, kids get into trouble or whatever, yeah. or knock stuff over, or don't do what they're told. And if you say like every time something like that happens, it's because he's the devil. Yeah. And everyone's going to be like, treat him way different. And that's exactly. one of the other themes, man. People treating people like off of rumors and uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. I need you to explore that for sure, man. <laughs> yeah. So Definitely. three years, three years old, another ceremony. This Fukuro is over here um, giving. He's, he's taking it back. I take backs. No take backs. <laughs> he takes back his, uh, his his real son's birthright. Takes it off of that Futama's neck. Is just like, dude, I can't handle you. You keep peeing on my head. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give back my birthright to my actual son. So he gets it back and then he's just like, you know what? Also, I don't want to take this fool anymore. Does any <laughs> yeah, you know, what the hell is that about? Just straight, you know, gives them up to the village. You know what I'm saying? Gives them up to the village. And then, you know, nobody's willing to to pick him up because it's like, bro, that's Tama. He's the devil. You know what I'm saying? So he's just offering it like, look, anybody can take him in. If not, I'm about to throw him out to sea. Like, literally, I'm about to. And nobody's going to see him ever again. And then. Well, if, does that come late? I can't even remember if that comes late. Oh, I think that that maybe that particular uh, one because there's another abandonment coming. Yeah, but another abandonment. The, the fisherman that found him uh, yeah. when he was born or when he crashed onto the island uh, is the one that says, you know, I I could use some help and takes yeah. him. Uh, and then we get another age up there, like I think like six, seven, solid eight years, six, seven years. Yeah. Um, and he's fishing and like helping him out and he looks like he's doing good stuff like they're smiling they're like holding an eel together oh. lots of father-son moments and i the, thought they were gonna the last da- bro i thought the, they were gonna last the dad is like so happy the fisherman he's like yeah we'll make a fisherman of you yet oh Hell boy yeah, yeah. get in here yeah. mm-hmm. uh was that one of like Django fed or something like uh, hey like <laughs> no, one of the like younger versions. No, no, no. So that's funny because Django Fett is freaking Jake the Muss. All right, Morrison. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was like. Wait. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got, okay, he's got. Yeah. That. <laughs> See, now you're making me question, like, was that Tim Moore Morrison, bro? <laughs> no, def- definitely, that. definitely, definitely. Yeah. Cliff Curtis, too, was in Star Wars, right? I don't fucking okay. know. He's <laughs> <He's> <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Yo, give Cliff Curtis some work. More work. <laughs> Keep him working. Um, yeah, and the fisherman works the boy. He's showing him how to mend nets, fish, bring all this stuff in. It looks like it's going well, but, yeah. Um, you know, one day... Uh, Tama is putting out a fire at, inside the house, uh, yeah. like a cooking fire or something. I don't know why you have that inside the house, first of all. Look, man. I need to be outside. The, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, everybody's Ubu's outside. The like huts yeah. outside. You sort of do the fire shit outside. Like right. This is another right. plot right. device. It's just like <laughs> put the fire inside, make it burn this. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh wow. <laughs> Um, and you know it's coming. The camera lingers on an ember that has fallen outside of the rock circle protection of the mm-hmm. you know little fire thing inside. But uh, mm-hmm. Tama takes his little brother, uh, the fisherman, and his wife's son. And there's mm-hmm. a narrator talking about Tama being worried that uh, now that the fisherman has his son, he's going to give up Tama. Like, yeah. now he doesn't need him anymore. He's already got his own kid. So he's begun constructing a boat. He's, like, chopping away, using an axe to, uh, you know, make a raft. And he plans on sailing away. Yep. But uh, these bullies, led by uh, Pua, his old uh, stepbrother, who is the chief, got the For chief's real? birthright again. I didn't Yeah, he's got that, that necklace. He's got the oh, necklace. Oh, okay. I thought they were just three random bullies from the village. Oh, okay. Oh, bro. Yeah, this poor kid is no better like, yeah. than his mom. He, <laughs> yeah, wow. he's a real POS for sure. Yeah. Uh, but he's and... also a sucker. He's a sucker, bro. He's a sucker. <laughs> we'll get to that, but he's a fucking sucker when he gets older, bro. He's a sucker for that, bro. Nah, why would you ever take her back, bro? She's straight ending your shit. Nah, he's a sucker, bro. So, yeah. <laughs> So okay, so Pua and his gang, the three idiots go on yeah. and they're chasing this full Tama, the bullies, mm-hmm. right? They chase him and um they're about to y'all beat the shit out of him and then they get rescued by the other main character of this movie. Kind of main character, more of like side I wish they showed more of her as she got older, you know, the foil. You know the foil? Mean? The foil. No, I mean, like, you know, the foil between, you know, they're, they're foils of each other, kind of. Their lives and shit, Tama and Mahana. Like, they show Wait, more oh. of Tama's life as, as he's older, as opposed to Mahana. Well, I guess there's really not much to show because she was in that same place forever. Treated doing like the shit. same state. Doing, doing the same, the same thing. shit. Yeah that's, yeah, that's true. Never mind. I just talked myself out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Got an arm though. Yeah, hey, for real. And aim. She was hitting the shit out. Yo, none of those. Yeah, none of those projectiles missed. She was hiding up in that tree. She chases them off. Yeah, uh, has that bag. And mm-hmm. he's like, what is this? He's like, give me my stuff, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you're stupid, stupid. Yeah. Why do you have a ghost cam in your back? Yeah. <laughs> hey, shut up. Shut up, Nosey. <laughs> Already off the bat, their chemistry is like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. first inter- interaction between the two, they the first time they ever meet each other, Tama and Mahana are <laughs> trying to bullies away. Are what? these the last two kids in the, like, picked for anything on the island draft? Wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like these are the like the freaking uh, ugly, nasty girl, uh-huh. and the unlucky uh, kid that like gets uh, adopted by families and stuff. The black sheep, the outsider. Yeah, these are the yeah exactly. These are the two black sheep of the the whole island, and they're yeah. immediately <laughs> have a connection uh, together yeah. and like comfort where they can argue and. Uh, but then it also feels like they're both kind of defensive and like trying to hide stuff, uh, yeah. hide themselves in the tree. Drinking. So you can, yeah, you can see that they could be really good friends. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's calls from uh, the village. Uh, there's an emergency happening. Oh, yeah. uh, there's a fire that has uh, started in the fisherman's house, and that shit is gone. It is yeah. up in flames. It is yeah. not smoky coming out. It is fire, flames, fully destroyed. Uh, this hut uh, lean-to uh, of the fisherman, and him and his wife are outside bawling their eyes out because they can't get in and they're they're afraid their newborn baby is inside Mm -hmm. Uh, but when Tama walks up uh, he hands the baby to the mom and he's just like bewildered he's like what is going on how did this happen and we come to find out that uh, you know they're talking about you know if the boy was where he was supposed to be this wouldn't have happened but he ran off and did whatever the hell he was doing so the fisherman gives him up he's like I have to think about my family chief uh, and I was like, I, I, yeah, he's your family, you asshole. Like yeah. that, you took him in your to be your family. You were having hella happy father son time. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, Mahana and her uh, drunk dad uh, are in the back, and Mahana convinces her dad to adopt uh, Tama. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and they go to their house and start working on packing up some kindling, doing chores around the house and stuff. Tom is not really happy. Like, I mean, he was going to get sent out to freaking sea. Like, that yeah. was the option. But he, it was none I mean, of us he, want him, so we're going to put him on a boat and freaking right. put him out there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, would they, <laughs> would they even be, like, kind enough to give him a boat? I'd be like, they'd be, probably be like, hey, you know what? Get your ass over there. Don't ever just come swim. here and be like, you know what? I'm going to take, yeah, just make him swim. Damn. When I have a boat, I could just go on my raft. Yeah, oh, fuck like, your raft. We're going to burn your shit. You'll swim out there. They were, that's, like, can you imagine a group of people so, like, poisoned by rumors and <laughs> just, like, assumptions that they're ready to ship a kid out to sea to die? Hey, so I like, know a lot about that. Give they give the give the kid back to the the gods. Yeah. <laughs> uh that uh yeah, that sucked. Um and selling but, kindling is crazy. Like as a job to make money. You gotta make it. You gotta yeah. s- scrape it all up, chop it all up, you bundle know? it. And are you like lot, lot, that <laughs> shit to uh, uh crossroads or something where people are gonna walk by you? Yeah complain <laughs> about the price. Yo, yeah, that lady was what? crazy. <laughs> It was like, bitch, you can make your own kindling. Yeah. You know what I mean? You come over like, here. Do and they buy have it. the monopoly on kindling out there now. <laughs> 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 this kindling is far too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Throws them like their beads. Yeah. What was that? Is that the currency? Nice shiny, I, shiny rocks. I can't even. <laughs> I can't even remember. I'll be I honest. Was like wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but they're. Uh, they're getting yelled at for no reason. And Thomas like looking at Mahana like, the hell's her problem? Yeah. <laughs> this, this, so why are people treating us like shit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Mahana's yeah. just like, well, yeah, they do this to me all the time, dude. My yeah. dad is the town drunk. This is our and life. I'm selling kindling. Yeah, this is my life, dude. <laughs> Yeah. This is our life, dude. Yeah, this <laughs> you're is welcome our life. For, you're welcome for saving your life, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> getting, getting him. He's like, she's like, don't complain to me, fool. <laughs> for real. Put your like, ass we're on the a same, raft. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the same boat, Tama. I'm dealing with this bullshit, too. Pioi. Um, <laughs> uh, Pioi is uh, Mahana's dad. Uh, he's he's over here talking smack. He's not helping, by the way. Yeah, he's not. He's, he's just, just sitting there drunk, uh, eyes Loser. glossed over. Uh, but he mentions that uh, Mahana was. Uh, uh, her mom was lost uh, giving birth to Mahana. Right. And you can see that he blames the shit out of his kid for yeah. losing his wife and he blames his whole life going down downhill from that. Um yeah, he's a but you he's can, a certified piece of shit. Yeah, and you can see that he's like it, her Mahana self esteem also, like she's a badass that like can bully back. Uh, yeah. But also her self esteem. She's like, yeah, I'm ugly. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm nothing. Talking that way about herself, uh, and that you can see where that comes from because he's like, my good for nothing daughter has a point. Yeah, uh, she may be too ugly for a husband, but sometimes she can clean the house. You know, just like yeah. uh, super being demeaning. a real one, being very reassuring to her. We're like, dude, you're not ugly. All right, yeah, you're, you're not ugly. ugly. Yeah, your hair is not ugly. It's cool. It's wild. Yeah, like, like the sea. I like the sea. I like, like your hair. Sea. Yeah. <laughs> Tries to give her a flower. And her hair's too tough to put it in. He's like, yeah. hey, you don't even need that flower. <laughs> yeah, man, being a real one. Uh, those uh, yeah, three little girls coming up and bullying them, and they just talk them back down and freaking scare them off. But Tom is done with all the BS for today. He's just like, yo, let's go swim. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, she's afraid. What if her father finds out? He's like, well, who cares? Let's, yeah. Let's go. Fuck them. Uh, they go for a swim. Uh, just like two kids out there playing, jumping in the water, having fun, uh, playing games and stuff. Like a really sweet, innocent moment where they're just getting away from all the hatred, all the haters out there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. just living their best lives uh, <laughs> by themselves <laughs> off a <of> waterfall. <laughs> uh, yeah. Funny, uh, I think it was Cat Williams that said, if you ain't got no haters. <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah, uh, going hard enough, right? 
Uh, but these Those ones two were, were going hard in the paint, though. <laughs> Especially Tom, but this fool done made his own raft out of this big ass tree stump by himself, and yeah. he had his supplies packed up and everything. Right he was ready. Yeah, he was ready, ready to go. So, um, they they have their swim time, they have their bond. They're you know what I'm saying. They're doing what they do, and then they come back home after a long day of getting hated on by their haters and shit. Um, Pioi comes home in a, in a drunken fucking state, being a piece of shit. You know what I mean? He comes home and he just starts, you know, just yelling at, uh, at, at Tama and Mahana, mainly at Tama, cursing him, talking hella shit to him and about him. And it's revealed that, uh, the day that, uh, the day that Tama was found washed ashore, uh, Pioi's wife had died while in childbirth, giving birth to Mahana. So there's a whole bunch of resentment from P.O. And he's just like, man, you know what? Fuck you, dude. Ever since <laughs> you so came crazy. in here, bro. You, yeah, yeah. He's fucking crazy. <laughs> for real. He's like, you know what, bro? You killed my oh, wife. You killed And you my- showed up on the same day. <laughs> yeah. This isn't a coincidence. You're a piece of shit. You know, he's just a fucking jerk. Yo, he's just being a jerk. Him, tries time. to choke him out. Yeah, tries to choke that fool out. Mahana's over there like that. Get the hell away. Get off. And then Tom was just like, man, fuck this place, dude. <laughs> Leaves. Yeah, deuces, bro. I got a friggin' raft. I made it myself. You drunk? Can you do that? Loser? You can't do that on your own. So he goes over there, and Mahana follows behind him. And he's getting his stuff ready, his supplies, and his raft. And then he's about to set sail. He's just like, you want to come? You can come, too. You should come. You should come. Let's go. We don't have to stay here for this anymore. Exactly. And Mahana's just like, dude, I, I can't. All right. I mean, as much as I want to, who's going to take care of my dad? Loser ass Pioi. <laughs> Even after all this time, Mahana's just like, dude, I got to take care of this friggin' idiot. And then Tom was just like, okay, well, I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Fine. This is word for word. The entire script of the movie. Um, so you know she she says that she can't she declines she declines can't go so they make a promise to each other and tama promises that um that he's gonna go and he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna come back for her. Mm-hmm. promises that he's gonna come back for her and uh come back and take care of her and they um exchange mementos with each other mahana gives her or mahana gives him her armband and he gives mahana the comb his little mother's little, comb. His mother's comb. That was found in the, the canoe on the day he washed up. Boom. Exactly. So then, you know, they do that. Mahana runs up this big ass hill, this big ass hill that overlooks the horizon, the ocean. And is just mm-hmm. like, dude, I'm going to come up here every day, dude. I'm going to wait for you to come and save me, dude. I'm going to come up here every day, no matter how long it takes. And then Thomas sets off on his journey on this fucking small ass raft. Yeah, that looks like it wouldn't support Mahana anyway if she were to get on. So maybe it was kind of a good thing that Mahana came on. Just lay down, just lay down. <laughs> you know, say be like Hold Titanic. The mast. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna navigate from up here. Don't let go, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Don't let go. Uh, uh, he gets it out there though. He's like, yeah, he, he has to fight to get it out of that. Yeah, but the. Freaking the reef beyond the reef. I don't yeah, know. Yes, yeah, beyond the reef. <laughs> beyond the reef. You Stay must not go the beyond reef. the reef. Stay inside the reef. Moana. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, he goes out and does his thing. All right. <laughs> Gets caught right into a storm. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Brad did not realize that there's hella ocean between every island he's trying to go to. <laughs> Yo, for real. You really thought the island was just like over yonder, beyond the reef. He's, uh, yeah, he, he ends up getting hella tired and washing ashore yeah. uh, at the home and island of a well-known trader mm. uh, who goes by the name of Johnny Lingo. Everybody gets heard of Johnny Lingo except for this this kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but he wakes up and uh, this big uh, this big guy is standing over him, nursing him back to health. Uh, the chief steward mm. uh, of the island, Johnny Lingo's right hand man, pretty much. Yeah, uh, he takes care of all the, I don't know, like records and the house and the the freaking employees. He kind of yeah. runs everything. Uh, Butler, he's like uh, he's like Alfred. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Alfred. Alfred with like a lot of a lot more hands on. Yeah. Wow, your audio cut out. Boop, 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 boop. I can't hear you, dog. Everybody. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, oh. How about now? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you're good, bud. Uh, oh, I'm just, it says my connection is unstable. Oh, uh, kinda... Damn, man. <laughs> Bring it, Tama. Uh, Tama, yeah, he wakes up and the chief steward is there nursing him back to health. Uh, one of the ladies of the house uh, brings him clothes, which Tama has never worn before. Pants and shirts. Yeah. I know about that. Uh, she helps him use them the what right way. You take for granted, bro. Yo, for real. I was like, who doesn't know? Oh, wow. Wow, this freaking kid. Damn. They didn't they never built see a pants whole, before. You know, bro built a whole raft. We can't mm. put pants on. Uh, they go out to breakfast with Johnny Lingo, who shows up and questions the boy. And Tama, the narrator, is talking about Tama being, you know, untrusting of the adults uh, because he's been treated like crap his whole life. Um, so he's not trying to reveal too much. Um, he says that, you know, a big storm washed him up and he hit his head so he doesn't really remember anything. Right. Straight line uh, through his teeth. Yeah, so I, I get it. Doesn't trust him. And the chief steward is like, "This sounds like BS." Yeah, uh, like, no shit. Is I don't trust this kid. Huh? Yeah, I, mean, I don't trust, I don't, you I don't trust this That's kid. Throw him back in the water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude. I don't want that to happen, so I'm a lie. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, I don't know what happened. I just we were on a journey, and you know, I washed up. But thank you for helping me, mm-hmm. Johnny Lingo. Uh, again, played by uh, George Hanare. Uh, Mr. Bennett, mm-hmm. uh, apparently like a really well-known uh, actor, in New Zealand has a really big career there. Um, done a bunch of uh, uh, TV shows, also. Hey, shout out to George Hinari. Hell yeah, yeah. I'm on the show, bro. Yeah, say your name right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Um, yeah, he's like Johnny Lingo, the most like the the best trader what, the what's a good trader, word for the, the biggest trader in all the south pacific he just he's he's just a merchant shrewd like a merchant a shrewd trader you know yeah. what i'm saying he he knows uh the value of everything he knows the value of everything he comes into you know contact yeah. with and stuff so. and he knows how to get like a better deal like you know oh. that you heard about that like paper clip upcycling where they were like oh can i trade this paper clip for something and they ended up yeah. after a long time getting a house Oh well, I, but the story I hear is telescope. <laughs> I telescope, like, yeah, like a, a paper clip to get it all for a telescope. Yeah, Something yeah, expensive. It's, and he's just making trades that are like positive net trades each time, uh, and he's built a whole empire of trade where he takes mm-hmm. stuff uh, back and forth across the different Pacific Islands. Right. Uh, he even has these new animals called cows that make uh, <laughs> the sweetest <laughs> milk. Yeah. Uh, cows very yeah. new to the Pacific Islands. This is, you know, back then. So, um, yeah, no one's even heard of these uh, cows. And Tom also is scared of the cows. As soon as he yeah, sees one, he like funny. books it into a tree. Yeah, and he funny. won't come down until that evil devil monster uh, marches away from him. But that cow like sits there the whole time. Everyone goes home. Tom is still up in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Like, ah. Yo, he finally runs down, unlatches the gate, throws it open, runs outside, but he leaves the gate unlocked. Mm. Um, and the next day, the chief steward will pops him up and he wakes him up. Put on your clothes. Follow me. Takes him out to the uh, cow pen where the cow is now sick. Mm. Um, yeah, and they're they're talking to him like, yo, did you leave the gate unlocked? He's like, no, no, I didn't do that. Why do you think I did that? You always think I'm messing up. Everyone thinks okay, I'm okay. messing so- up. That that part where you say that he left the gate unlocked, did they show that in the movie? I think I asked that last week, but did they show that in the movie? Yeah, like the gate, they make oh, a I point that the that gate kind of like ricochets and it's open okay. wide. All right. oh, I straight yeah. missed that. I guess I was, I don't know, not yeah, and he's, to the movie. Okay. And the. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right, well, next time we'll get, we're going to watch it again. <laughs> 
uh, and Johnny Lingo's like, Tell me, you don't have to lie. You know, right. it's when you've done something wrong. Okay, uh, that's okay. part of that's part of you know taking accountability for your mistakes. Um, you know, the first time I watched that scene, I was like, "Damn, why are they riding Thomas so hard? Like, he didn't even leave that shit unlocked, like, bro." But I just missed that part where. <laughs> what are they gonna reveal? Who really? What really happened? And, yeah. and clear <laughs> yeah, my for... my guy's name. Yeah, I want to yeah. see the look on the face of the chief steward when he realizes, "Aha! It was not Tama, and I'm a dick." <laughs> yeah. That never came because Tama was the because one. Tama, yeah, he was the one. Teeth. Yeah, <laughs> he was just lying through his teeth. <laughs> yeah, he was lying hell hard. Okay. Uh, but he's so, yeah. Johnny Lingo was being super nice to him, but now he's yeah. like kind of getting the scared. He's actually, yeah, he's like actually upset. Yeah. Like, that whole time he was trying to give that fool Tama a chance, but this time he was just like, dude, I I done fed you. You know, I clothed you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You washed up on my damn island. Yeah. Well, I mean, he wasn't even sweating it, right? Like, he was right. like, the scene is uh, Chief Stewart and Johnny Lingo are back in the house. Mm -hmm. And Chief Stewart is like talking a bunch of shit. He's like, man, this kid is no good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Johnny Lingo's like, it was a mistake. He was scared. Oh, it's I'm not worried about it. Okay. Let's just yeah. move on from this. Keep doing what we do. And the Chief Stewart's like, nah, this is, he's no, he's bad news. We should just send him back uh, to where he came from. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think they know where he washed up ashore from. I think they like mentioned we should send him back to like yeah, either the yeah, ocean or to Malio's Island. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Johnny hears this because his room is adjacent to the room that they're talking in. So yeah. he's like, oh, see, I knew this was going to happen. They're going to get mad at me. They're going to throw me out. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to hop on uh, one of their boats and I'm out. Yeah. So he takes off, but he gets caught. He also gets caught with a big ass bag full of like all the golden stuff that uh, Johnny Lingo was showing him earlier in his right. treasure room. Mm -hmm. um, trying to take a bunch of stuff uh, and steal from him. But mm. now that he's caught. Oh, this is the part where he was actually upset. Like, bro, I. Okay, I got yeah. it. Okay, I got it switched up. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, "Didn't I give you run of the island? Like, I get on, fed bro. you, gave you all the clothes, pretty, pretty much saved your life. Yeah, uh, and have been nothing but good to you. But why are you stealing from me?" And he's like, "I heard you guys talking, man. Yeah, you were talking shit. I was there. I, I heard was you. there. Yeah, I this heard you. This big fat guy. He's trying to. He's like, hell of man. Yeah. They be beefing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he's like, this guy's trying to throw me out. I heard what you guys said. Mm -hmm. Um." So, yeah, Johnny Lingo's like, oh, man, well, you did steal, so we got to work off this debt. Yeah. So you're going to stay here for seven years. Yeah. Seven years, I'll be an old man. I'll be an old man. <laughs> an 11-year-old. <laughs> yeah. You'll only be like 19, 18, 19. But, yeah, yeah. yeah that shit does sound hella old when you're 11. But yeah, that's, uh, that's almost twice my age right now. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> that's a so whole lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> so Johnny Lingo gives him the ultimatum, right? Seven yeah. years. But there was also, they were talking about, you know, um, was it like, who are you going, who are you going to go see? Are you, are you trying to see somebody? Because he's seen the armband, right? Mm. That's when Johnny Lingo, you know, he was upset about him stealing the stuff, but then he sees uh, Thomas armband and then he's like, okay. Um, what is it? Oh, yeah. yeah, seven years. Either you do seven years or you give me the armband. Yeah, or you trade me that you armband. Because Johnny Lingo knows when someone thinks something is very special. Yeah. And he's like, is not, he's hesitant to part ways with it. He you know says, hell no. Yeah, he's like, no. This is worth more than all your stupid trinkets. Yeah. It's like, so that's why? Uh huh. The person who gave it to me is the only person who's ever cared for me. <laughs> Matters of the heart. It's like, why like, is your voice like, breaking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh my god, this is matters of the heart, Chief Stewart. We have to, we have to help him. We have to help him. We were also in trouble. We were getting into a lot of trouble back then. Yeah. So he offers him the. Uh, <laughs> he offers him you the seven the days. Yeah. <laughs> Look, 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 I don't want to say anything about their relationship. But I keep having to remember that that full Chief Stewart, I think, had a wife. And and Johnny Lingo wasn't married, so I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> I don't 
don't know what Steven Ramirez is trying to imply with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just reaching. Well, Johnny but. Lingo didn't need a wife. He was out there. Johnny <laughs> Lingo had pro- Johnny Lingo was probably hey, he, someone. Yeah. Johnny Lingo had six bitches. different families. <laughs> Johnny Lingo had bitches. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, now, okay, so so Thomas gonna be there for seven years, and they're gonna. Like he's got to work off the oh no <laughs> he's got to work off like the the water. debt that he was uh, trying to steal. So the chief steward freaking puts him to work. Uh, he makes him like smash the nonu plant into juice, and he's doing it by hand with like a pestle. Yeah, <laughs> or, pestle uh, and mortar. Yeah. Uh yeah, so that what else is he doing? He's got a uh, clean stuff. <laughs> Yo, yeah, he's, he's got, got a he's net. got a clean he's got to fix the net. Um, he's got to fix the nets. He's got yeah, cl- to all that nets. gold stuff he tried to steal. There's a room full of it. He's got oh, to yeah, shine you know, them. Shine them, wipe them down. Yep. You know, and there's more stuff coming in each trip. Yeah. Got to shine it all up, keep it all nice. Lots of yeah, elbow man, grease. General upkeep of the island, bro. You know, oh, uh, exactly yeah. what Chief Stewart seven, is doing. Seven years. Seven years, too. Yeah. Jeez, but then, you know, through, it says on the note, <laughs> hard work montage, and that's exactly what happens. Because that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's exactly what's going on. <laughs> hard work montage. He's picking up boxes, mending the nest that he learned from that, you know, weak ass fucking fisherman dude. <laughs> but who I was actually kind of understandable. I get it. <laughs> I get it. It's like, bro, this fool burned my house down. Fuck this kid. <laughs> okay. No. So um, he's mending the nets, and then with the <laughs> with the workout montage or the working hard montage, the workout montage, <laughs> work montage. This fool getting is- stronger. <laughs> You're the best around. Wow. <laughs> he, um... <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. Keep singing the song. It sounds great. <laughs> but um, um, it, it starts showing slowly how resourceful Tama is. You know what I'm saying? He's actually really, he's kind of smart. He's a great inventor. Bro, created his own oh, raft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He He made yeah. a little lever. A little lever system like to whole contraption yeah Yeah, whole contraption that like tubes filter jugs where he's just like yes instead of doing the smash he's like basically just doing a handle yeah Uh, saving a bunch of time bunch of Mm -hmm. strength sweat yeah Yeah. (laughs) because there's so much that they they have like 100 gallon (laughs) freaking big ass yeah huge bro. containers of uh and in that fruit yeah in that montage he was when he was using the pestle and mortar they were bringing out like three four barrels at a time and then he fucking got into the fence like i don't want to do this shit anymore <laughs> like but bro you got to make the best of it you got seven years it's gonna be a long ass seven years that lady yeah the the you know the other uh the other worker over there you know and then from there you know something switched to them um you know he started embracing his life a little more and then that's when he discovered you know how much of a great inventor he is you know what i'm saying so you know making chief Stewart and johnny lingo take notice of this kid you know what i'm saying and throughout the years from there mm-hmm. johnny lingo was like you know i'm gonna take this freaking idiot under my wing you know what i'm saying so shows him how to sail gives him like yeah. a, a a really big boat and how to navigate and handle mm-hmm. uh how to map the stars and oh, really yeah. traverse the the ocean there mm-hmm. uh we get an age up scene now the uh, 11 year old is going to be the eldest tama the adult tama right uh played by joe Folau. Mm-hmm. Um, i don't I'm, uh yeah and now he's basically one of johnny lingo's greatest workers helpers uh kind of a member of that inner family uh mm-hmm. group the community really yeah mm-hmm. uh and uh there's uh, health issues for Johnny Lingo that pop mm. up. Like uh, Chief Stewart is trying to make sure he takes his medicine throughout the movie, yeah, drinking the like juice. Reveal it. Yeah, that's true. Um, and Johnny Lingo is talking to Chief Stewart about uh, taking a two man trip uh, mm. across the Pacific with just him and Tama. Right. Uh, whereas there's usually a crew of like six, seven people, mm-hmm. uh, maybe uh, around there. So. 
this is a really big uh, navigating experience journey that's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chief Stewart has his doubts, but uh, I feel like Johnny Lingo, this is where he feels like he wants to pass the torch yeah. to Tama. So this is kind of like his test, but he, he doesn't tell Tama about it. Uh, and it's going well. They're going island to island, doing their trades, really showing, uh, building a community with uh, other people. They're having ceremonies and stuff, or they're trading. Um, They're going island to island. Um, And the narrator tells us, you know, he's proving to be a great apprentice uh, to Johnny Lingo until freaking they get to Scary Chief's Island. Yeah. Do you want to tell him about scary? <laughs> yeah, of course we could. We could talk about scary chief, but like in the meantime, through all that, you know, with the time jump, it wasn't just uh, Tama that they showed. They also showed Mahana and where she's at currently. You know what I'm saying? So she's back over there at the island with freaking Koto's idiot ass. You know what I'm saying? And um, she's obviously grown up. She's up, and her hair is still as wild as it usually is. And then um, when it cuts back to the island with an older Mahana, it's showing her actually being sold. For two, uh, for two chickens as a wedding dowry to get married to one of the freaking fools from the island, the locals, David Fonny. <laughs> hey. You know? Polo! Um, polo. Freaking Polo. And, um, you know, with Mahana, her her same self, she's still very combative, you know what I'm saying? Not scared to throw down with anybody. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, man, Dad, how could you? And then, you know, uh, does away with him, you know, fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him and fuck you. And then, um, you know, from there, they come back to, obviously, uh, Tama and Johnny Lingo's journey through the islands as they're trading, and they meet up with who they call in the credits Scary Chief, (laughs) right? He doesn't even have a name. It's just Scary Chief. So they get to Scary Chief's island, and um, Johnny Lingo has his whole hoard of, like, gold. His whole, you know, he has a whole lot of gold. He's been trading with them for a very long time. So him and um, uh, Johnny Lingo and Thomas sit down for what looks like an Ava ceremony. You know, they're passing around the ceremonial juice or the ceremonial, you know, what I think it was the juice of the movie. And, um, the, you know, they're all taking a sip of it, the ceremonial sip, and it gets to Thomas' hands. And, of course... He drops the damn cup. So unlucky. Yeah, he's so (laughs) unlucky, but also he's really skilled, so he's going to be cool. (laughs) He's going to be good. Um, He drops the cup, and everybody's just like, (gasps) the gasp. Everybody gasps in the cave. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? The the gods are offended? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They're like, look, you dropped the cup. Now our gods are offended, dude. And then Johnny Lingo's just like, dude, look, we can give you whatever you want. All right, we, we got more. And then Scary Chief is just like, dude, um, I hear you guys have an animal called a cow, and it produces a light. <laughs> exactly. Produces uh, produces milk. Yeah. And I'd like to give a great wedding dowry to my um, future daughter in law. Future daughter in law. Uh, <laughs> hey, shout out Scary Chief for playing that uh, playing that cup drop for a cow. Because right. he was only going to get like a gold lamp. You know what but I'm saying? He turned it into a whole ass cow. Hey. Hey, hey, well played, Scary Chief. You know what I mean? He's, you know, <laughs> we're all schemers out here. Even Johnny Lingo is schemer. So scheme him. <laughs> Johnny, right? Ling- yeah, Johnny, hey, Lingo Johnny Lingo was like, kind of a schemer. A cow would make a wonderful wedding dowry. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I'm trying but, to make um, a herd over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you're fucking it up. No, but so so Scary Chief um, uh, asked for the cow. Asked for the cow and um, demands Tama to be kept there as a hostage. Yeah. He's just like, dude, you cup. have. Yeah, for dropping the cup. He's like, dude, you have uh, you have one more um, uh, a full moon until the next full moon to go and give me my cow. And we're going to keep this freaking guy for dropping the cup. We're going to keep this guy's hostage. Yeah. And then Johnny Lingo's <laughs> like, uh, oh, oh, okay, let me talk to my guy. Let me talk to my guy real quick. And then he's just like, dude, uh, Tama, I'll stay. You go and get it. And Tama's just, you know, shitting bricks. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it's a big-ass boat. It's a big-ass boat that you need at least like five or six people to man. Yeah. But, you know, I, I feel it's, it's like kind he's of more sh- scared like something's going to happen to Johnny or – like, well, I yeah, mean, of course, of course, yeah. yeah, of course, that too. But you know, yeah, yeah, 
the biggest that's the biggest worry is that he's worried about this fool johnny lingo bro but he's also just like dude i might just fuck this up because he you know he he's lacking confidence in doing it yeah but, um, yeah <laughs> wait what's that what happened believe in yourself Come yeah. on, man. <laughs> you're very you're, skilled you've been in a new environment people right. believe in you they're like Look, uplifting man. you come on he just turned 18 he doesn't fucking fully know yet oh. man okay give him a chance lance <laughs> he's just scared it's a big it's a big journey it's a yeah, big undertaking scary this fool lands like yeah he's scary ass fool <laughs> i'm like yo you're like a prodigy in the sailing community uh, <laughs> in the sailing club bro maybe it's just because this freaking challenge gets presented to him and he hey. has to come through for it and that's a uh, lot of pressure bro if it was just a it, oh, routine yeah. ass going on going by myself <laughs> to get this cow come on bro of course he's gonna pass with flying colors yeah. but bro you only got like a month <laughs> the full moon only comes yep. around once a month like bro you only got a month to go back to lingo island and get me my fucking milk squirting cow bro. <laughs> you only have a month you know what i'm saying uh he does it he gets yeah. out there and he traverses his way navigates his way back to johnny lingo's island yeah uh the chief steward is flipping out where is johnny yeah why are you what well, happened? Wait, hold on, bro. We gotta get something to go go, go save this fool. You wanna come with me? <laughs> Yo, you have you to come with saying? me. I'm not driving with me, back bro. by myself. You know what I'm saying? You have to come with me, man. We're gonna Chief, go get Johnny right now. Chief Stewart got the the craziest pose at the top of the ship. Yeah, it sails by. He's got like one leg up, like yeah. telling Captain Jack, yeah, or Captain real. Morgan. Uh, yeah, they do get back with the cow. Uh, and Johnny Lingo is okay. Yeah. Uh, he's also kind of satisfied with uh, Tama being able to to handle that mission successfully. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, before they can talk more about it uh, and Johnny's plans for the future, uh, Scary Chief is like, "Yo, we're about to go to the uh, the wedding gift ceremony. You guys want to come? It's uh, over here at Turtle Island." So, so they- oh, so how perfect is Tama's timing when he gets there? Like, yeah. oh, we just dropped this cow off. Oh, now you're gonna do the wedding? Goddamn, my timing is impeccable, bro. Yeah, I'm in right in the and- nick of time. <laughs> you're welcome, Scary Chief. <laughs> I brought the cow back. And here we go. They uh, the scary chief's son walks that cow in, and ev- that village is going crazy. They're like, <laughs> "Oh, she's worth a cow! <laughs> she's worth the what? freaking cow, bro! Is that a cow, dog? Damn, girl, you're so That's a fine! Freak. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they, they're assigning value based on how big the wedding dowry is, mm-hmm. uh, and never before had there been a price so high." Right. Um, and the, this is a yeah, this is a really big thing. So, mm-hmm. um, well, during the party ceremony, uh, this old lady walks up uh, to Tama. She like recognizes him. Yeah. Uh, and like looks at his birthmark mm-hmm. and declares him the son of her eldest son, uh, who was the former chief of Turtle Island. <sighs> Uh, and Tama is revealed to be the rightful chief, right, uh, and heir to the chiefdom of a large island out there in the South Pacific. Not just the like some out of them. Not some bad luck <laughs> devil child from hell. For real. Uh, I was like, hey, show me your ass, though, because we all yeah. know about yeah this full Tama. And then and, she uh, gets every arm. she gets everybody together, and she's like, look at his ass. No. <laughs> I was like, damn, you gonna do that two times, bro? We'll take your word for it. If you watch it, the face he makes when she does that is fucking hilarious, like, bro. What the hell? He's just, he's just like, <sighs> uh, but yeah, she claims that the he looks just like her eldest son. Yeah. Um, and the age matches up, and the birthmark matches. So this is her grandson and the the, the, chi- the rifle chief uh, to Turtle Island. Right. So now the kid who was nothing is now the prince, right? Mm-hmm. From like a uh, pauper to a prince. Mm-hmm. Um, and Johnny Lingo is like, damn it. <laughs> well, uh, you have fun here at Turtle Island. Uh, we're going to go back and I got to train somebody else up <laughs> real quick. Uh, very sad about it. Yeah, yeah, he's very sad and conflicted. Yeah. Cause... He finally found his real family. 
You know what I'm saying? He was literally abandoned, or not abandoned. He lost his parents in yeah. the shipwreck. And um, he finally found, you know, real family, you know. But he also built up a family and community with Johnny Lingo, so that dude was super upset about it, which rightfully so. And then they have a talk about it right before uh, Chief Stewart and Johnny Lingo are about to leave. And, you know, the grandma's just like, duh. It's cool, man. <laughs> they, it's cool, all right. They got the cow. You, you know, they're gonna be good for a while, all right. They're, they're gonna be a good chief. You go do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? And then Johnny Legal's just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, please, <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> I want to go back home to Johnny Lingo. <laughs> so, um, Johnny, I mean, uh, <laughs> Tama, um, gets in the water, swims after the boat, and then they all come home together as heroes. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Give them a hero's them. welcome. Saved them. They, yeah. You know, yeah, they get laid off of the boat. Uh, they're, the whole freaking village is there. Mm. And Johnny looks sick. Johnny looks a little older. Like, yeah. he looks a little green, green tired. Yeah. Uh, but Johnny stops the festivities and is like, I need to talk to Tama. Yeah. And he walks him uh, up to the top of, a, you know, a hill on the island where they see the tombstone of Johnny Lingo. Whoa. And Thomas like, Thomas like, I don't want to be here. You know, yeah. let's, you know, we shouldn't have made you walk all this way. You're tired. And he's like, yo, I got to talk to you. Okay. And he explains the whole story about, um, how there was a great trader named Johnny Lingo. Uh, and when he was a, young boy making trouble took him in taught him the ways and gave him the name the legacy um the ships the the items of johnny lingo's estate Mm -hmm. and he carried on that title and now he wants to pass that title on to tama yeah um and explaining you know just as he told him when he was showing him the the treasure room and all the boats uh his first week there to use you know all that wealth and power for good use it to help other people yeah um and to make sure you know that he carried on that name uh and torch for him Mm -hmm. and then shortly after um Johnny Lingo is sick in his house, mm-hmm. um, and we see him uh, pass away, making uh, after passing on the name to uh, Tama to be the new Johnny Lingo. Mm-hmm. And Chief Stewart's going to be there to help him. Everybody's going to be there to take care of him. So, um, yeah, that was. I mean, definitely sad seeing that father son the. Johnny Lingo uh, passing away um, and the care you can see uh, from Tama and him uh, for each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he was really good to his people and the people on the island. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was, big, it was a big loss, but I mean, God, you know, they, they get right to work right after, like literally oh seconds God. after the funeral. This full <laughs> chief steward gives him a hug. And he's just like, all right, Johnny Lingo, what the hell you want to do, bro? And then this full time was just like, no, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to that other island and I'm going to find Mahana now. Yeah. He's like, bro, we're- let the man rest. <laughs> <laughs> this is at the f- foot of his freaking grave. That is great. But then, you know what? As I'm saying this out loud, I'm remembering that right before Johnny Lingo died, he, pro- he, he made Tama promise him, like, hey, you know, have a son. Or I want you to have a son. I forgot about that part. Yeah. So he says that, and now I'm just like, well, I mean, still, he couldn't wait a week. Chief, <laughs> like, damn, gotta get right on it. <laughs> yeah, gotta get right on it. Find him a mate. Gotta find him a mate, mate. Uh, so then, um, yeah, they, he, he is now the new Johnny Lingo. Tama has now been bestowed the name Johnny Lingo, and he's heading back to. Uh, I forget the name of the island where Mahan is at to fulfill his promise. You know what I'm saying? To yeah. fulfill his promise to come back think, and take care for him. What? I don't think there's an actual name of the island. I think they leave it blank. Okay. And then they just go off of like the main person. Because on the Wikipedia, it's like uh, Malio's Island. Hmm. And Malio is the name of Coro's character. Sorry, of a uh, <laughs> weird Veritanus <laughs> character. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they go back to uh, Malio's Island to find Mahana. 
Chief Stewart is there hyping everybody up. I don't know why he's got to be out there, like, playing the whole announcement. Hey, everybody! Right. Like, we know who we're here for, but we're searching for the finest girl in all the lands. Right. Uh, She is beautiful and kind and great, so Johnny Lingo will be here in a couple of days. Everybody get ready. Yeah. Uh, The island goes crazy on the lingo hype, right? They're talking about how great this guy is, how rich he is. All the girls break up with their fiancés in the effort, like, to make themselves available for Johnny Lingo. Pua, the son of the chief. Also, like, uh, Miriam, Miriam, Mm -hmm. uh, there's a scene where her dad goes up to the chief's family and, like, is explaining he needs to cut the engagement because Johnny Lingo's coming up. And they're like, the mom's hella mad, too. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) my I, Marky, probably all, all the come up ins you're gonna get, but I'm yeah. glad uh, that happened. Right. Um, yeah, the island goes crazy. Johnny Lingo gets there. He's like, I don't, I don't see what I'm looking for. There's like a whole feast dance, and he's like not interested because he he doesn't see the one person they're there for. Right. Um, so he makes the whole uh, island go down to Bahana's house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, because he needs to see every girl so I can make my decision. Yeah. Uh, but Mahana is not home because mm-hmm. she's out on the Heartland Cliffs looking for Tama, uh, which she has done every morning and every night oh. for every day uh, since uh, Tama swam away on that raft, mm-hmm. waiting for him to come back and rescue her. Right. So uh, Peoria is like, oh, she's uh, she's out by the cliffs. I don't know. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he finally does uh, see her, um, does he go out to the he, cliffs? They meet up a couple of times. They meet up a couple of times. You know, um, uh, I think it was once at the waterfall where they used to swim as kids. Oh yeah, were there? Yeah, like he denied her a couple of times, or she denied uh, him a couple of times. That shit was hilarious. That was that was like some of the funniest scenes. That's when they called each other fathead. <laughs> well, well, I don't want to go with you. You look like a fathead. I'm not a fathead. You're a fathead. <laughs> you're a fathead. Fathead. Yeah, you're fat. She's hella bad at him, but she's like, oh, this guy is a rich guy, pretty boy. Like yeah. he doesn't. He want. Enti- we have the, nothing in common. He doesn't, entire, he's not here for me. Yeah, the entire island doesn't recognize Tama from when he was a kid. You know what I'm saying? They all yeah. know and see him. They see him and they're like, oh, my God, is the great Johnny Lingo. Everybody's in his ear. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, they, <laughs> Chief they, Stewart is getting rizzed up. Bro. Yo, what? Yeah, I knew she was a problem. You, you know, know what I see? Her? Yeah. <laughs> my daughter, she's very yeah. nice. And so uh-huh. am I. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, he was like, look, look, man, I'm trying to work. All right. Get the hell away. I'm trying to work. Get off this camera's me. all over the set right now. What are you yeah. doing? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Act like you've been here before. The fuck? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Come on, this is too much. This is too on, much. You know what I'm saying? Girl. Damn, shit. Wow, shit. Let me breathe, dog. I'm here for Johnny Lingo, bro. <laughs> I'm working right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mahana's like seeing Johnny Lingo is like here nobody get yeah. out of here yeah, yeah man they, they they you know I forget what other times they interact but you know every time they interact uh Tom was just like man what the hell am I supposed to do I was mad at that point though I was just like dude show her the fucking armband <laughs> yeah. you should have showed it the first time you didn't have to you know what I'm saying I get it it's a movie suspension disbelief but I mean damn Easily. Show the armband, bro. That's all it <laughs> she, had to take. She's also talking about, I think he might have been taken aback because she starts talking about Tama and how, mm-hmm. like, you know, I've been waiting for this guy, but for the last eight years, every single day, every single night, do you know what it's like to That's have your horizon. hopes mm-hmm. rise with the sun? And to go down every night when okay, it sets. That's, that's a beautiful writing right there. Every single day, my yeah. hopes are, uh, you know, rebirth and rekill, like drowned into the, yeah, the Western horizon. Uh, and he hears that. And he was like, oh, he, she hates Tama. Yeah. Like, how can I, you know, confess myself to her? And that's the guy that she is so, like, she thinks he's dead or has, yeah. like, 
decided to break his promise and not yeah, come forgot back. About forgot her. about her. Yeah. Uh, she also doesn't recognize him. Yeah. Um, but he announces that he wants to barter for Mahana. Yeah. Uh, yeah and was uh, at the uh, feast. That's what. Yo, uh, yeah. This was at the feast. The island is like what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, of all the girls, you you want uh, the one that we call ugly and keep on the side of the island, and no one is really friends with her, and people start down to her all the time, and mm-hmm. have fun bullying her. That's the girl you want. Yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'll talk to her father and figure out uh, how much uh, we're gonna barter for her hand in marriage and everyone's like okay 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 he's just trying to get her for like two chickens or something right you know that has, has a straight like city hall meeting right there back in the you know what i'm saying back in the uh in the folly and shit you bro. know after he makes that announcement um and Pioi, there with her dad Pioi, yep yeah Pioi is uh asked how much do you want for mahana mm-hmm. Uh, and yo, they just <laughs> he asked for two cows, yeah. So, like, and cow. he's like, What? Two. How many, how many? He mumbles it because he's like embarrassed to ask for it. Because yeah. one cow set the league record just yeah. like a month ago, yeah. you know, that was yeah. like a <laughs> career high trade, and he's asking for double that. Hey, for what everyone hey, sees shooters as less. are gonna shoot Lance. Bro, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, shout out to Drunk Dad because he gets it. Yeah. Not only and yo, two cows, the the crowd goes crazy. They start right. laughing. Mm-hmm. They're they're like embarrassed, but also like there's no way that's a real request for Mahana, even like for anyone. That's not a real request. But then also laughing because it's Mahana and all the people are shitty. Mm-hmm. Uh, to which Johnny Lingo replies, two cows is a lot, <laughs> but not enough for Mahana. I offer eight cows for the yeah. right to marry her. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone eight. falls out of their chairs. They look outside and there they are, eight big ass fully grown cows mm-hmm. uh, ready to be uh Giving up. I might be thinking yeah. of the freaking 69 one. When did the cows show up? <laughs> <laughs> the, the cows showed up right there uh, when they he announces the eight. But um, I really like that part uh, before he reveals the eight cows when P.O. is just like, you know, he's like making, not making a mess with Mahana, but actually like complimenting her. And oh, giving, you know, giving, yeah. giving her, giving her her flowers and shit like, dude, I don't deserve I don't, des- you know, she yeah. she's taken care of me for a very long time, and I don't deserve her. It's her loyalty, her loyalty, um, yeah. and her love for her father, something like that. Very something very sentimental. And then that's when he was like, "Look for all that, I want two cows." <laughs> Koto, Koto, I want two cows, bro. Can you let Johnny Lingo know? I want Sorry, two cows? what did you say? Your hand was blocking your mouth. Yeah, he was like, "I want two, <coughs> two cows." <laughs> Hella embarrassed over that, but he gets yeah. it. The time he fourfold, uh, he gets you know the full saying? eight cows. Mahana's like, "What the hell is going on? This has got to be a joke. Yeah. Why did you just pay what, such a crazy amount uh, to marry me?" Yeah, um, and they have it out right there uh, outside the huts, in front of everybody, in front of the village, mm-hmm. where he's talking about you know this kid and this promise uh, to come back for her, and he wanted to like help fulfill that, but. He understands that she hates that kid now, mm-hmm. um, and he's just gonna leave. But as he leaves, he like shows the arm with the armband on it, yeah. And she recognizes uh, that as her armband, and this as Tama. Mm-hmm. Um, so she says, "Wait, hold on." She looks at him, and she smacks the shit out yeah. of him. <laughs> Man, I slapped the dog shit out of him, bro. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was for the last eight years, <laughs> she says, uh, revealing that she knows who it is. Um, and this is for coming back before kissing him and them becoming a family. Yeah. Uh, oh, embracing yeah. happily as the movie begins to tie up. 
Uh, the narrator voice is back. He's back in that house that we recognize as the Johnny Lingo house. And the young guy he was talking to was Tama. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tama, who has Mahana, whose hair is combed in, in a bun and she has got a flower in her ear, mm-hmm. uh, representing growth. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, they're just like, oh, look how pretty she is. Look how pretty yeah. she is now that we paid eight cows for her. She's so yeah. <laughs> now that now they're together, right? The love story is is complete, uh, and there's a little baby boy too. Yeah. Uh, and the narrator yeah, is like the Johnny Lingo story. I am sure will continue to go on. Yeah. Um, and it ends with the uh, the happy family of Tama, Mahana, and uh, Johnny Junior. Yeah, Johnny Johnny, Johnny the fourth. Yeah, I guess. I don't fucking know. <laughs> and that Johnny Lingo the Fourth. This is the legend of Johnny Lingo. <laughs> <laughs> JL4. JL4. Oh yeah, that's that's the, the legend of Johnny Lingo, man. Um this movie's hilarious in its very early two thousands way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um we'll definitely get into themes of what we think of the movie as a whole a little bit later on, but now we got to get to our rating, bro. Yes, sir. We got to get to our final scores. I keep forgetting the rubric. I'm going to bring it up. Oh, I'm tripping. It's right here. All right. So what's up, bro? All right. Rewatchability out of two. I give it a two. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's hilarious enough for me to uh, watch it again and again. I think All there's right. some, some classics there. There's some classic quotes in there. Very quotable to me. What about you, <laughs> <laughs> what happened? That's a, I, that, sorry. I gave it a one. Uh, I gave it a one. Okay. It was, I saw what? it. I saw it. I know it now. It's yeah. <laughs> no. I know it now. That's okay. it. I know it now. Uh, okay. Casting out of three. <laughs> I gave it a one. We know it now. (laughs) This guy Lance is a sad bro. This guy's a sad. I mean, this it's not a zero though. Like (laughs) there is some (laughs) rewatching appeal. Gonna win a zero. (laughs) Okay, hey, fair enough. (laughs) That guy Lance. That's fair, bro. Fair and honest. (laughs) Casting, (laughs) casting. Um, I'll give casting a two. I'll give this a two. Um. Yeah, some of those guys were just I don't know. I feel like Koto was a big distraction for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Koro was the perfect angry he was, chief. You know what I'm saying? He was oh man. <laughs> he was just a huge distraction for me though. That shit was hilarious. And it did fit exactly exactly what I expect from freaking Koto's actor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um I think the kids were casted great. Tom and Mahana, the, the child actors were great. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, I also give it a two uh, for casting. Uh, okay. Some really great names. Uh, some noticeable faces, especially. Mm. Um, and then, like, yeah, young uh, kid Tama was like the kind of like the James Rolston boy character where mm. he's like, you know, trying to fight for himself and showing off that spunk. Uh, right. Not as good as James Rolston, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, hey, but, he, you know, I, th- I think he, he did his part. He did enough uh, for it to, to go from a two and from a one. All right. Soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Soundtrack out of five. Uh, I got uh I got a two for this. I uh, I put a two also. Uh there is one Tevaka song, uh Tamahana, that I've been what replaying. Did, what do <laughs> they play it? It's like the theme song of this. I don't know if it's at uh over the credits or uh before, but mm. it's like um it's the song's lyrics is like the whole story of Johnny Lingo, like I, I made a promise to you, girl. Don't worry, hold on, I'll I'll come back. Um, and it's a banger, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the that's the only banger. You see, everything yeah. else was like stock, uh, 
fucking stock music. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, cinematography. Uh, wait, you gave this a two? I gave sa- I gave soundtrack a two. Same. Uh, cinematography out of six. Out of six? Uh, I'll give that a three. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, nothing crazy. It looked very yeah. early two thousands. No. Um, no crazy shots stood out to me. You know what I'm saying? It actually looked like. It kind of looked like a bootleg. Um, <laughs> Uh, Flintstones, the live action movie with like Rosie O'Donnell in them. That's what yeah. it looked like to me and reminded me of. But you know, it's middling. So three for me. Uh, I'm gonna also give it a. I'm gonna yeah. I was gonna give it a two. I'll give it a three. Um, I think, especially for 20 years ago and uh, right. on this production budget, um, it was really good for its time. Mm. I'm gonna give it that. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt there, uh, and give it a three. Uh, editing and directing by Steven Ramirez. <laughs> out of seven points, <laughs> out of seven, I'll give that a two. I'll give the <laughs> directing a two. <laughs> uh, just because of um, because it's Steven friggin' Ramirez, I guess. Be- I mean- oh, because he's Mexican last name. <laughs> 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 no man that's crazy <laughs> i need to figure out what else steven ramirez has done yeah um, figure out his work because it just it, it was i don't know it it was um also middling with this bro it's like a, it's just another average movie i guess i i see your point with the uh rewatchability <laughs> like, you've seen it all before and it's it's nothing new you yeah. know and it was a pretty fast well as far as pace though like there were scenes where it just felt like it was too sped up. Like uh um, Yeah, it jumps around. The yeah, journey around too much. Yeah. The age jumps at the beginning. It's like yeah. I feel yeah. like it could have been uh better put together. But out of so I give it a three out of the full seven. Okay. Uh acting out of eight. Acting out of eight. I'll give it a seven. Everybody was great. I feel like everybody's acting was great in this movie. Uh, I feel like Chief Stewart was over the top a lot. I feel okay. I don't know. Is this writing or acting? When the acting feels like it's unwarranted, when the outrage is like, why are they tripping? Is that the writing? That uh, I think that's that more might, the writing. I think it, it could be. I think it's more like the acting and how the actors are interpreting that part. Like, oh, I, you, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And even then, it's um, like, yeah, you didn't have to put that much fucking mustard on that, bro. <laughs> that was hella over the top. <laughs> Jesus. <Lord. laughs> uh, like, you know, like for the like the whole tone of the movie, everything is is pretty you know straightforward. You know, like over I'm the top a- and hammy is actually perfect for this movie. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Oh, the hammy. Okay. Yeah, the hamminess is very. Uh, it fits necessary for a movie like yeah. It fits. That's the directing. Oh yeah, that's the directing. <laughs> that's oh, I'm saying oh. everybody. If everybody's hammy. Then it's the guy that's in charge. Hey, fair no, enough. No, I got a seven for acting as well. Mm. So writing is where I'm gonna sock it to him. Uh, writing and script out of nine. <sighs> Why is it? Say, I'll give it a five, bro. <laughs> okay, I gave it a three. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Why, why'd you go with a three? Yeah. Ah, it's just so like, okay, so also this is the short story film was only 23 minutes and mm-hmm. it started with Johnny Lingo showing up to barter for Mahana. So it's just that end part. So okay. this, the legend of Johnny Lingo is all like pre story to the, to that. It's like Tama's mm-hmm. not mentioned in the old story or the short story that was written. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was all just for this movie. Right. Um, and it's just so jumpy, choppy, uh, a lot of really quick age ups. And then we never see these people for like, you know, 20 years. It's all over the place. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I I would. I, I don't know if I'd be right, but I'd equate that to pace. But I mean, shit, I feel like the. Um, yeah, I don't expect Oscar worthy moments from a movie like this you know what i'm saying and as far as the writing goes i feel like it it served its purpose and yeah like the, the mm, jumpiness okay. is kind of crazy to me you're right and but with even w- with more context right with the original short story i guess that is a weak story to build around the existing material so i hear what you're saying 
Do you think like that's a like? Did you think that uh, the story they made just for the movie was freaking terrible and doesn't match well with uh, what's already been established in the short story? I think it does. Oh, no, I think yeah. it does. Yeah, I think uh, actually, like for building out a, mm. a, a pre story, yeah, or uh, yeah, like a what is that called? Prelogue, Diamond? pro prologue, yeah, yeah. Uh, prequel. Uh-huh. Uh that it was solid. Okay. Yeah, yeah. like it made it makes sense, right? Like yeah. they knew each other before and that's why Johnny Lingo showed up and paid uh, the right. highest amount ever. Um yeah, just marking off like a writing checklist of what makes a yeah. story passable. It's like it it hits its marks as far as yeah. its writing goes. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So uh all right. So you gave it a 5. Mm-hmm. And then for legacy, out of a possible ten, uh, I'll give this a strong six. <laughs> a strong six. Um, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces in there, uh, people who would become stars later on. But as far as the movie itself, I don't really see a lot of people talking about about it. I think maybe because of all the shit we was talking about it with, <laughs> probably for the same reasons with all the shit we was talking. Um, yeah, I guess all in all, it would be just a solid six, bro. It, it didn't really move the needle, I don't think, in, in terms of, like, our community. I could be wrong, though. Shit. I don't <laughs> oh know. Oh, my God. What? All right. Uh, so, Johnny Lingo. <laughs> I, oh, I gave, it a, uh, I gave it a five. I gave it okay. a strong five. Like, not a... Uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't think people are really uh, watching this or even 20 years ago yeah. I think it was like over the top out there um but definitely still uh still like uh passes the ear test like people know or claim to have seen the movie or know what it's about or have at least seen that mo- like mahana you ugly scene yeah um so yeah, that's why I give it there. Uh, final scores. Let's see, six, nine. All right. Uh, you gave The Legend of Johnny Lingo a oh. 29. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, God. And I gave The Legend of Johnny Lingo a 26. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, nice. wow. <laughs> Man, maybe we were a little too tough on that one. <laughs> no, look, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta be honest, right? We gotta be honest. Gotta, and gotta this be. is a <laughs> this is a fun movie for me. It was a fun movie to watch, and I know that like the script really ain't shit, but I'm not I'm not expecting <laughs> I'm not expecting a lot. I'm not expecting. So I'm just glad I got to see David Fonny in there and friggin' Till Wheeler in there. And Koro. <laughs> All this shit I've been talking about, Koro. It was cool to see Koro in there, too. <laughs> and I think Boogie's in there, too. Bro, Boogie is in Bro. all the movies we've been watching. I yeah, swear. he's there as a background character. Oh. I feel like this, is, this was a definite upgrade on the short story. Because right. the short story was just like, just pay a lot for a woman and she'll feel more self-confident. <laughs> Uh, and this was more like a love story and a fight to return after making a promise. So, shout out to the legend of Johnny Lingo for improving uh, the old text. Yeah, and David Ramirez. <laughs> Why did they <laughs> hire Taika Waititi? Ta- Taika was busy making <laughs> boy a better move. Oh no! <laughs> He's up there no. making like the eagle and the wolf and a bunch oh, of really? crazy vampire making movies. That's just not my shit. I'd rather make uh, you know vampire movies and well. stuff that I'm interested in. <laughs> Was the answer for why didn't you help work on Moana? It's like it's not my vibe. <laughs> hey, fair enough. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. Shit. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, I mean. I still recommend to watch this movie. <laughs> oh, check it. it out. Check it out. This shit is, <laughs> shit is hilarious. Um, check, check it out. Let us know what you think. Give please. it your score. Uh, let us know about the themes and stuff. We'll be talking about themes on the, the deeper dive on the review. The review. <laughs> any uh, any themes that stick out to you that um, people can expect to hear? Off the top, resilience, I guess. Nice. Um, uh, yeah, mainly that, you know, they both didn't have an easy life, Mahana and Tama. But rumors. You 
<laughs> Rumors yeah. and resilience. Yeah. <laughs> No. R and R, the R and R department. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. Just that's just it off the top. Um, yeah. What about you? What, what was you thinking when you was watching this movie, bro? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I guess resilience is is the better word for it. I was like, yo, this is a tough kid. Yeah, go get him. Yeah. Look at him fighting all this adversity. What's a good word for that? Resilience. That's, yeah. great. That's great. Uh, the mom talking smack and really cultivating a toxic environment, mm. uh, and how that led to a bunch of uh, you know a bunch of the situations going that way. Mm. Uh, kind of stuck out. Uh, definitely the short story. And the old original Johnny Lingo, uh, yeah, and I guess that selling selling uh, stuff for marriage. No, we'll see about that. <laughs> hey, hey, a cow, <laughs> a cow, bro. Hey, dowries, wedding dowries are crazy. Those are crazy times for dowries, bro. Those are crazy times. But I, th- I think they still exist today, don't they? <laughs> so I was just going to yeah. ask. I was like, is that <laughs> they still, they, that's still, that's still going on? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, if you know um, about dowries, hit us up in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's know what you know. For your wedding? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a pig. It was a yeah. size four. It was dead. Oh, shit. I would be mad as fucking now. <laughs> like, bro, you, you just get... <sighs> Yo, you're <laughs> cursing that fail. You're cursing that fail. They do that to me. But um, yeah, this has been another episode of the Pacifica Movie Starter Kit, man. Y'all know what it is. I'm Marcus. I'm here with Uso Lance. Um, we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> <laughs>